Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Children of God, welcome. Welcome to this place of love and grace. Welcome to this place of hope and perseverance. God invites us all to be part of a beloved community. God invites us all to share in the good news. We are welcome, just as we are. We are loved, just as we are. In gratitude for all this, let us worship God. Let us pray. Holy God, our hope and trust are in you. We quiet our souls so that we might listen. We calm our minds so that we might comprehend. We still our bodies so that we might take notice. May we experience the holy in the here and now where you dwell with us. May we know that we are not alone in this journey of faith. Quiet our souls, our minds, our bodies, and break open our hearts in love. In this we pray, amen. Let us continue prayer in prayer as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's first hymn is hymn number 18. Let's just praise the Lord. We're going to sing it through twice. sheet in your bulletin. It is from Psalm 37, 1 through 9. Do not fret because those who are evil or have it, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like, like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon fly away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret that it is going to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. <laughs> there is no treasure on earth like the treasure that awaits us in heaven. Isn't that ultimately the important treasure? <coughs> Isn't exactly where our heart lies? That is why we must practice tithing, to show God that our heart lies not in the wealth on earth, but in the de death, 
but in the death of spirit and faith. Nothing we own is as great as that which we will one day inherit in heaven. Would the ushers please come forward to receive this morning's offering? before you, Lord, and ask your blessing upon the givers and the gifts. May we be good stewards of the blessings we have received, and may we always be mindful that all this is for your honor and your glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning's scripture reading is from 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as my forefathers did, with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I, I have been remembered of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remember you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline, so do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord, or ashamed of me, your prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, by the power of God, who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. What you hear from me, keep in the pattern of sound teaching and with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who loves, lives in us. Thus ends this morning's reading. Our next hymn is hymn number 435. We'll be singing verses 
1, 2, and 4, God of grace and God of glory. Please stand if you're able. turn to uh, the next scripture reading, I just wanted to uh, see if you noticed something there, that I may be filled with joy because I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois. <laughs> so that is not appropriate. We didn't actually intentionally plan it, <laughs> but I thought it was a very appropriate scripture today. So we, we do give thanks for that because... Uh, the faith passed on to generations is so very important. Uh, let us turn to uh, Luke 17, 3 through 6. So Jesus gives a warning here to his apostles. And he says, so watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. If they repent, Forgive them. If they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. He replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Here ends the reading of this gospel reading. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just pray that uh, you might illumine our hearts to your truth, your word. We know that we can go so far on our own, but ultimately we need your wisdom and your grace. We need your presence in our lives to live out the very things that you taught us to do. What seems simple is difficult and impossible without you. Apart from you, we can do nothing. And so we just ask that uh, you illumine us and fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Just put my hymnal away here. So, so I want to uh, just uh, consider with you the challenge, the challenge of, of living as Jesus taught these simple words. Uh, very often I find that it's more difficult to do the simple things than it is to do some of the amazing things. We seem to be easier to do something absolutely incredible than some of the very simple words that Jesus guides us with to forgive, to forgive. It's easy to ask for forgiveness, right? Sometimes it's hard. People have to put their pride aside and say, hey, I was wrong, am I bad, forgive me. Uh, I need to uh, get get something beyond. My bad is really kind of an excuse. It's not really a, you know, it's not really a great pardon or anything. But it was it was at least some attempt to acknowledge something went on, and it was uh, 
your own fault. But to say, hey, forgive me, is sometimes hard to say. But I think it's probably harder to forgive someone than to say, forgive me. It's harder to extend that peace. And so I, I worked a message around this theme that peace be with you. Peace be with you is really the message of Christ to send out his peace. He came from heaven to earth to give us peace and, and be able to give it to others. Now, sometimes the most difficult uh, places to do that is uh, in, in close relationship with someone. Someone that you see all the time. It's easier perhaps to forgive uh, someone else that may be a stranger than it is to forgive others that we live in relationship with. Uh, we, we have a difficult time cutting free of past memories. And, and I saw this in uh, sometimes uh, musicians, large groups, of, no, no offense Jack, we're glad to have you back. So, so not, not talking about Jack or anything of that sort. He has a great spirit and a great joking spirit and we love him so much. But sometimes musicians are so uh, tight in a harmony and chorus. I've seen it in, now this is just not whole true in prison, but it is true with the guys that are musicians in prison. And I wish I could say, well, it's only these people that uh, are convicted felons that have this problem, but that's not the reality. The problem goes beyond that. And sometimes they, um, in the way that they talk to one another, I just had a conversation this week with someone said, I'm really trying to find peace with my brother. Now, these are two guys that, that I just love, their faith in the Lord and their years, decades of service to the Lord. But sometimes they don't know how to, they're living in close proximity in the goldfish bowl and uh, always up in each other's you know uh, life. There's nothing to hide. And, the, and sometimes the rub comes. And uh, he said, well, I'm just trying to live at peace with them. And I said, are you at peace with yourself? Are you at peace with yourself? Are you going to, and he started to, to bring up some kind of history about what, I said, well, now wait a minute. You know, that, that's really not helpful. If you're going to go bringing up some history, bringing some record of wrongs, this is not going to guide you to peace. What you've got to do is remember your love for the Lord and what it was that, uh, that you have in common with this brother who also loves the Lord. And so walking in our love, then we can extend peace much better than going back through a history lesson of what made us upset at some point. It's really not all that helpful. So we have to go from the, actually what I learned is one of the managers, uh, in hospice, when I was working in hospice, the, the phrase was always, well, moving forward, you know, when we would talk about changes, healthcare is, I see gas yes, smiling, so I, I know that it's a common thing. When change comes, we say, well, moving forward, we will be, because often we get caught in our past and trying to either hold some feelings about it, either good or bad, that keeps us from moving into the next phase. And even if that's something good that we know, it's sometimes hard to get there. And so uh, I'd said, well, sometimes what we say to one another is really, though our heart intention may be right, what we say may not be helpful to keeping peace. It's how we say things that are important and so Romans 12, 18, and I told him this verse, I said, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. If it is possible, peace be with you. Live at peace with everyone. Now, I used a, an illustration. I don't think I told this story here, but you'll, you'll enjoy it again if you, if you heard. But when, when we went on vacation, so... The, the thing that, that gets me is that my intention and my heart may be right, but my words and my tone might not be right. 
So, so I admit that as a human being. And so when we were on vacation, Janie gets tired when we travel. And I do everything I can to try to make sure that she doesn't get tired. Now, I will say that last week when I went up uh, to Brian's event, Amy took me around on a golf cart, and I felt like I was in the Pope Mobile <laughs> riding around this thing, and it was absolutely amazing. But going through the airports, I didn't have any such golf cart to take Gianni through airports to go on vacation. And so I would, whenever possible, I would get her bag and I would pull her bag. And, you know, what I started saying without really thinking about how it sounded was like, give me that bag. And Gianni said, why did you say, honey, can I take your bag for you? <laughs> And it was so much better when she said it that way. I was like, you know, I need to receive what's the input that somebody's giving me. And I used that at the prison to talk to these, this gentleman about how to talk to others, that you need to hear what did they hear out of what you said, not what, what was your intention. Because our intentions are generally good. Well, we don't usually try to upset someone, but yet sometimes our delivery and our words fails because we're tired, we're human beings, and we just jump into what's easy to blurt out. And it's easy to drift off into some edges that we might have that disrupts the peace that we ought to give to one another. And so I, so I use that. And there was actually another inmate sitting there who was trying to uh, encourage this, this inmate to have peace with his brothers. He was kind of like the referee. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, what he's saying is right. You need, to, you need to get this right. And, you know, sometimes we get this tag team approach of people talking to us if we listen to hear that, you know, we really need to talk to each other in a way that peace is the outcome and not just whatever we might be thinking uh, we ought to be doing. Well, I would say that, uh, you know, it's amazing that Jesus, when, when he resurrected from the grave to his followers who had many flaws and deserted him, his first words coming back was, peace be with you, peace be with you. He had overthrown the devil and he had opened heaven. He revealed their salvation and the miracle of the resurrection. But his word, and he could have said all kinds of amazing things. He was like, see, I'm here. You know. But he said, peace be with you. And, and it's amazing because you think about their failures. Uh, at his crucifixion, they were running, hiding. They had lack of faith. They had weakness. They had fear and doubt. They worried about the authorities, what's going to happen to them. Jesus did not bring up the painful and embarrassing events. And so he didn't get back into a history lesson of what it felt like to be alone and how they had abandoned him. But he wished them peace. Peace be with you. And it, it's similar to the way that when he met the woman caught in adultery, and there were the religious leaders trying to stone her to death. He said, who condemns this woman? Who, who casts the first stone? And he said, neither do I condemn you. Go from now on and sin no more. And so uh, Jesus said these words that brought peace to people that were religious leaders, brought peace to uh, his followers, brought peace to people who were far from God. Don't be afraid. For now, you'll be catching men. He said to Peter, when Peter was like, um, he, he was saying, I'm a sinful man. Depart from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. And he said, don't be afraid. Have peace. Have peace. And so there are many times that we realize our own failures, our own humanity, uh, how many times we might uh, grieve the Lord, and yet God stands not as some angry God from heaven, but some loving God reaching out to, to welcome us, to offer forgiveness, to offer grace, and to offer this peace. But when things go, uh, if, if we're looking for the kind of peace that the world brings, 
you know, there are many counselors. Uh, there are things that, that we might look at. Uh, a, a really great program, if you haven't gone through it, is Financial Peace. Tells you what to do with funds and investments, and you try to put your piece together. But your piece is based in large part on your circumstances. Some people that listen to Financial Peace or Dave Ramsey on the radio and hear what should they do with their money, they're like, that's too discouraging. I can't even begin to start with that because the peace is based on your circumstance that over time you apply that wisdom and you find some peace. But the world's kind of peace is that it's based in our circumstances. Jesus' peace to us is that we have peace in the midst of trouble because he is with us and he holds our future. It's beyond the present circumstance. And so his peace is a relationship that's based on his love for us, not our failings to him. And that is just an incredible thing that God would offer that. And so it's on his boundless love. Well, we need to have peace with ourselves. Uh, some... You know, someone has said, you can't give someone what you don't have. It's hard to give somebody peace if you don't have your own peace. And sometimes we see that uh, what we're available, what we have in our resource tank to give to somebody else, I don't have the peace within me to give you much. And we see that at times, it's not what's wrong with the person, but what happened to the person. Danny told me this from work. She, she said that uh, in, in counseling, what they will talk about is the, the phrase, often people would say, what's wrong with you? And she said the better phrase is, what happened to you? And then as believers, we say, were you able to find the peace of God? Because he's offering grace, forgiveness, love, wisdom without finding fault, and he offers peace. And then when, when someone becomes more whole and healthy, they're more able to offer peace to someone else. And so we sometimes encounter people that don't have peace. Sometimes they're uh, the service people that we have at cash registers or you know restaurants or somewhere else, or we see them driving along and they're flipping a finger at us if we uh, you know didn't, didn't do something right in traffic. And it's like maybe the resource tank is small because they have not found the grace and peace of the Lord within it. And maybe if, if we had some action, you know, maybe we have, have some need for peace as well. It's like, what is going on inside of me is what comes out. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And sometimes our, our mouth reveals what's inside when we need more peace in encounter with God. Well, Jesus brought Peter back of all that betrayed him. He didn't have to perform these acts of atonement. Uh, Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? Do you love me? And notice that Peter did not have to say, I love you three times, but he finally said, Lord, you know that I love you. And what Jesus was after is that, Peter, you need to rediscover the love that you have for me. You know that I love you. I, I want you to know also that you love me and we're in that relationship with a perfect God and failed human beings that's around the love that he gives to us that we then can move on. And then when he's like, feed my sheep, you have something inside of you now to feed the sheep. You have the grace and the peace of Jesus. And so we find ourselves as the beloved of God, the chosen and destined for heaven. And so we have a love already within ourselves. And, and then we come to this peace with each other again. Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Jesus is sending out to treat each other with the same mercy and love that he's shown us. And sometimes we forget what our role is. Sometimes we forget his goodness to us. And so loving and forgiving each other sometimes is, is challenging because our human nature 
is to lash out in anger or to say some harsh word or to sink into guilt or resentment. But Jesus' peace is in our is to reign in our hearts, Colossians 3, 15. And so like Jesus, we should be able to say, neither do I condemn you, that we have the grace and the peace to give to others. Peter, it's interesting that uh, when you think about his own life and failures and his rediscovery of his love for the Lord, 1 Peter 4, 8, love covers a multitude of sins. Peter's like, hey, God, God loves me so much that, that not only uh, did he recognize this, he, he recognized his own humanity, love covers a multitude of sins. It's like, well, shouldn't we all be at that point? It's like, oh man, sign me up for, the, for that deal because if I try to get there on what I do, it doesn't work. If I try to live the Christian life based on what's in me, it doesn't happen. We had a speaker that had been an inmate. He was out for eight years now, living very uh, successfully and um, married and, and living a life of faith. While he was incarcerated, he came last week and it was incredible to hear his testimony because he said the chapel would have activities and guys would say, uh, hey, why don't you come down to the chapel? He said, I'm the game on. And then they would have services, and he'd say, I don't want to come down there. And he said, I did not go looking for Christ. But somehow in my circumstances, Christ came and found me. He said, and when he found me, because of my state, what I was in, he said, I was crying like a baby. I called my mom on the phone and tell her I found the Lord. And she said, sick him, Jesus. <laughs> she was like, get him. Don't let him part way in. He needs it all. He needs your love. He needs your grace. He needs your forgiveness. He needs to be humble and cry and recognize what's in there. And he said, sick him. And it was interesting. He married a, um, a nurse. And he said, now, I don't know if you know what this is. And he's telling the guys last week. He said, but, uh, you know, a pick line. You know, is the lines you put in your veins. And he said, and you know, he said, I was, I was really something. And he was just honest about the kind of life that he had lived and also about what his humanity is. He said, you know, if I, I need a pick line with the love and the blood of Jesus flowing into my veins. He said, if I don't have that pick line, I just turn into a gremlin. And I thought, that is so good to recognize. All of us need to recognize what is the source of goodness that we have. It doesn't come from us. It comes from our great and wonderful Heavenly Father through the blood and sacrifice of Jesus. And so we need that pick line to him, not just a former inmate, but all of us have humble ourselves and recognize we can all turn into some nasty curmudgeon if, if we admit it. But we know that we need the guidance, the wisdom, and the sacrifice of our Lord. We know we need his love to really reach out in truth and love others. And so with that, we said, peace be with you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we just ask that uh, you will uh, Help us recognize that uh, you are the vine, Jesus said, he is the vine, and we are the branches. Apart from you, we can do nothing. We need the flow of your love in us, and that love gives peace. Your love, perfect love, cast out fear, and so there's uh, much to gain if we are with you, and we can walk in that and extend that peace to others. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we're going to turn to 173. Our glory belongs to Jesus.
to uh, have an invitation to come to the ta table of the Lord. We'll ask uh, our communion uh, helpers to come as we come and we prepare the table. Jesus has prepared the meal for us. We know that apart from his nourishment, our souls are dead in sin. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Christ. Apart from him, we can do nothing. And so we'll have her. And today I'll, I'll read uh, from John chapter 6 and a passage uh, about this communion table. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, unless we eat, of, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day, for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I have become, or I have, or I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. John 6, 33. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Let's pause for a prayer for the bread. Your gracious, loving God, as we come into your house this morning, we ask for your blessings upon everyone in here. As we partake of the bread this morning, which symbolizes the broken body of your son, Jesus Christ, we ask your blessing upon it. And may we be very mindful while we're doing this ceremony of the meaning of that and how it can make our lives so much better. In Jesus' name. and said, take and eat, this is my body. Let's eat together. Jesus took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. He said, drink of it, all of you. This is the blood of a covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Uh, and let us uh, just share in the cup now. Yes. So 
Oh, let's pray <clears throat> for the cup. Um, Heavenly Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thank you for being with us to celebrate this sharing of the cup, to remember when Jesus was with, was, was, was with us on earth. Bless the congregation in their needs and be with us all in our daily lives. In Christ's name, amen. on the cross and in our hearts. We know that both are necessary. You made it possible for us on the cross and we made it personal in our own prayers and receiving of your great gift. And we just ask that uh, we might be those who are filled with your love, seeking you, come to the fount uh, to find the renewal and the refreshing as we need that to give out uh, fresh grace and peace around this community and around the world. Uh, may we do it in word and actions, with our hands and our feet, with our words and our thought and our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. And for our benediction, I wanted to read from uh, number six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.